is the vision of the Chinese president for the new world order? And is that new world order simply incompatible with the world order that Trump or Obama or the future president you think is envisioned? Well, another great question. So uh, earlier with Obama and also today with, uh, with Trump, uh, she talks about what he calls a, quote, new form of great power relations. Now, what does he mean by that? Why do we need a new form? And the answer is he's got the idea, and he talks often about Thucydides' trap. The old form is a great power rivaling a ruling power, and they end in a war. And we know we don't want a war, so we want a new form of great power relations. So this embodies two ideas for him. One is you recognize that we're the other great power. So there's just two great powers. So there are not any other great powers. There's just us. So this is kind of the recognition of us as we come into our own. And that obviously drives most of the other countries crazy because we say, well, you know, there's many great powers. We say we're the special power, but nonetheless, there are many great powers. The other thing is great powers should respect each other's core interests, he says. And the core interests of China, he leaves a little ambiguous, but they certainly include all Chinese territory. And then they include everything inside this nine-dash line in the South China Sea, which is basically all of the all of the objects that are above water anytime. And then they basically, when you talk to them, they say, well, they actually mean our neighborhood. So like most great powers, we think we deserve deference in our sphere of influence, historically. So we would like to be the predominant power in our region in the first instance. And you say, well, what about the long run? Well, the long run is a different story. How about for now? for now. So I would say the Xi vision that he's trying to persuade Trump about is, well, we can take care of our space, sort of like you think of yourselves in your hemisphere. And if Trump were prepared to offer, or any American were prepared to offer him, well, you, one of their other versions, he said, we'll, we'll do the, we'll do our, our half of, he said actually to, to Trump, I think today or yesterday, We'll do our half of the Pacific, and you, the Pacific is big enough for you to have your, your, your half. So take Hawaii. You can do Hawaii, you keep that, and you're going that direction. And we'll just be the predominant power on this side. So you look and you say, well, that's sort of what Teddy Roosevelt said to the Brits. Okay, well, there is some similarity. There's no question of that. But we think, wait a minute. We have a great ally in Japan, which we're very proud of. We have a great success story in Korea, which we're very proud of. We have great friends in Australia. India, we're building a stronger relationship with. So we're not about to leave the whole region. So that's part of the, part of the rub. And I think that we'll see this mainly in the regional competition, where, where it's serious, more than in the global competition. There's one other little fillip of this, which is, is puzzling, I think, even to the Chinese. So President Trump has decided that the global leadership role that the U.S. has played uh, traditionally, uh, at least symbolically, is not as important as previous presidents thought. So both in the trade domain, uh, the U.S. has been the champion of the open, liberalizing, uh, uh, a rule-based uh, market order. And uh, uh, the, the collapse of TPP, the trade agreement that we had negotiated in Asia, which actually collapsed in American politics, not just by Trump. I mean, Bernie Sanders trashed TPP more vigorously than Trump did, but, but the, in any case, we negotiated a big trade agreement. Many of the countries in the region paid the price in their domestic politics of agreeing to it, and then we pulled the rug out. So this leaves a big space. So at Davos in January, 
all these other leaders of countries said to Xi Jinping, well, the Americans are not here. They've pulled out of the agreement. You're the leader of the open, free trade, rule-based international system. And you could see even a little look on his face thinking, are these people teasing me or is this, you know, what, what, I run the most protectionist, mercantilist economy in the world. And I intend to continue doing so. So the idea that I'm the leader of the opening <laughs> doesn't seem a little puzzling to me, but they said, that's you and you're gonna give the speech. So I know one of the people that was involved in writing the speech for him, and he said, we found it amusing, but we went back and we wrote about Thomas Paine and you know whatever uh, the rule-based order. Similarly, he went to Germany, and Mrs. Merkel says, this is after we had pulled out of Paris. She says, you're the leader of the climate-friendly, green uh, uh, international uh, uh, initiative. And he's thinking, wait, we're the biggest greenhouse gas emitter in the world. And we intend to be, can be the biggest greenhouse gas emitter for as far as I can see. We, we, we burn more coal than everybody else almost combined, and we're going to continue to burn coal because we need all the energy we can get. She said, you're the leader. He said, okay, I'll give a speech. I'm the leader. So I think, I think those part he's just picking up for the, sort of for free, but I think the things he cares about are in the region.